Greetings. Welcome to my office once again. Um, Pastor Jeff Snow here from First Baptist Church in Fort Hope, welcoming you to another um, short message, short devotional that I hope will be an encouragement to you. Um, if you're watching this you know, during the pandemic that we're going through, that will be an encouragement to you, or if you're watching it weeks or months later. Somebody commented to me when I was on a Zoom call this week that um, the beard is getting more and more significant. I feel like I've got a, a coronavirus isolation beard going on there. <laughs> if, I, if we watch all seven of these messages, I think seven of them, you probably see the beard getting bigger and bigger. I think I may try and trim it for the next one. But today we're going to talk about something that we shared in a, a Zoom small group Bible study we did this week. So for the five of you that were on that call, this might be a bit of a review. But for others, I, I hope that it will be something that will be really encouraging. Um, I try to keep my grocery shopping down to once a week. I go over to the local Food Basics or Metro and uh, try and get in and out as fast as I can. I've been going a uh, half hour before closing time all the time. And I have found that to be the best time to go. I think the last time I was there, I counted maybe four customers in the whole store, um, maybe eight or nine employees. It's, it's uh, a, a lot less stressful going in the last half hour before closing time. And so I'm getting, um, you know, usually I would go grocery shopping a couple times a week. So I've been getting larger grocery orders for myself. And um, I buy food for meals, like lunch meal type food and supper type food. And then, of course, we buy snacks. And I am discovering that uh, while the supper like, time meals last, like right now it's Saturday, I'll be going shopping tomorrow night. And I have still lots of supper type food at home. I'm running out of the lunchtime food, late lunch type food at home. Uh, the snack food ran out five days ago. That's like, I buy snacks that I think will last a week, but I go home for the first 48 hours just gorge on the chips and the grapes and the cookies and whatever else I've bought for snacks. And I guess that kind of stuff is what people call sometimes comfort food. And I've seen a lot of comments online of people who are saying, yeah, I'm putting on pounds. And part of that is just this constant snacking, whether it's out of boredom or whether it's in search of the comfort that so-called comfort food can provide. We are all in need, whether we like to admit it or not, of comfort in our lives. And the New Testament is what uses the Greek word parakletos to, um, to describe what we have translated in the English New Testament as comfort. And the word means to come, literally, literally means come alongside someone. To come along beside somebody. It means to literally kind of walk a mile in their shoes and come along beside them in whatever they're going through. And that's going to be a key point in what we want to look at today as we look at what it means to experience comfort from God and what it means to give comfort to others. We're going to look at two scripture passages. I don't have my high tech paper that I've had in the past, but let me read to you um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. It talks about the comfort that God wants to give us in our trouble. He's the God of all comfort. Where does that comfort come from, from him? Well, it comes from his promises, just knowing who he is and his character, that he is faithful and what he has said in his word he will do for us and, and about our situations, he will do. He promised never to leave us and never to forsake us. He promised that though in the world we might find trouble, that he has overcome the world. We find comfort in God's word. Now, God's word has many different um, impacts upon our lives. And sometimes there's conviction, which isn't always comforting, but it's always good. But God's word gives guidance. His word gives direction. Um, his word 
in Psalms 119, the word that's used to talk about God's word is not laws, the statutes. And sometimes we think, well, how are laws comforting? But laws protect us as a society, protect us as individuals. In God's law, somebody brought this up in, this, in the Bible study, and I thought it was a really good point, that God's laws protect us from sin. God's laws protect us from the consequences of sin. And in those ways, God's word and his laws are comforting. God provides comfort through his unfailing love and his continual presence. Like we said before, God said, I will never leave you, never forsake you. The Psalms talk over and over again about rejoicing and resting in God's unfailing love. God loves us so much. Even when we have a hard time loving ourselves, even when we've done things that we know have broken God's heart, His love for us is unfailing, and we can take comfort in that. When I read that passage in 2 Corinthians 1, which is a bit of a tongue twister, saying the word comfort over and over again, the idea that God, of all comfort, has given us comfort so that we can in turn comfort others with what we've received. And when I've read that over the years, it kind of gives some meaning to suffering. I know it doesn't answer all the questions about the problems of suffering and the problem of pain, but I think it gives us something to really focus on, that God allows suffering in our lives so that he can give us the comfort. He can give us the strength we need to get through those difficult times so that we in turn can turn around and bless others with the comfort we receive from God when we see them go through difficult times, whether it's the same thing or similar things. About 25 years ago, I was very sick for about six months with uh, something that doctors just couldn't put their finger on, but a lot of it just, it just uh, dealt with a lot of fatigue, and I was just unable to work. I was at, I was at seminary at the time. I was unable to go, and um, I remembered for a number of years afterwards, after I kind of came out of that, and I learned so much from God about, about who he is and how he wants to be part of my life. Um, I remember my empathy level just going through the roof. You know, whenever I would talk to someone who was going through health issues, especially if they were mysterious and difficult and frustrating, it was like, I know what you're talking about. Uh, Let's talk about this. Tell me about you. Tell me about what you're experiencing. Tell me what you're going through. So I think God can give meaning to suffering sometimes by allowing us, by allowing His Spirit to work through us to really bless and minister to others and give that others the comfort that we receive. They go through hard times as well. And like I say, it just increases our empathy meter so that we can. Um, have that desire to come alongside someone and to walk with them with what they're going through because we've been there. And that's kind of what comfort's all about, walking alongside someone. And there's a great story in the book of Job that I want to talk about a little bit. Um, let me give you Reader's Digest version of the book of Job in case you're not familiar. Um, Job was a very godly man probably and a very rich man, a very wealthy man. He didn't earn his wealth or his riches um, by cheating people, but he was very, he was a man of integrity, very well respected. And the book of Job, the story of Job starts off in the heavens with the enemy, Satan, going before God and saying, Job only worships you because of all his riches and because of all his wealth and his family, and, and he has a good life. If you took that all away from him, he would curse you, God. He would run away from you. God knew it was in Job's heart, so he said, okay, you can do what you want with Job, but you can't touch his health, his physical health. And so Satan, a bunch of things happened that Job's wealth and his riches were just taken away from him. And Job wouldn't curse God. He still worshiped God. And Satan again came before God and said, well, of course, I mean, he didn't let me touch his body. Of course, if, if, if I took away his health, uh, then of course he would like curse you and he would run away from you. And so God said, knowing what was in Job's heart, he said, okay, you can touch his health, but you can't kill him. And so then we see Job being aff afflicted with all kinds of boils and sores and all kinds of 
of uh, different illnesses and diseases. And we see a very pitiful picture of Job sitting on an ash heap with a, 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 a way of mourning in that culture, sitting on this ash heap and scratching uh, his, his sores and his body with broken shards of pottery. It was just a very pathetic scene. And, and his wife said to him, why don't, just, why don't you just curse God and die? Just be done with it. But then we come to a point where Job has three friends. And through the grapevine of the ancient cultures, somehow the word got around back then without the internet. Go figure. And so they heard about what Job was going through. And Job chapter 2, verse 11 tells us, when Job's three friends, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Nebathite, his name is for you, when they heard about all the troubles that had come upon Job, they set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. They began to weep aloud and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great Job's suffering was. A few lessons I think we can learn here about why comfort means, how God wants to use us to comfort people around us. First of all, it was intentional. They heard about Job's tribulations and they didn't just say, that's too bad. It's too bad for Job. He sent him a card. You know, they, there was something very intentional. They decided to get together and go. And they did something that was going to cost them. It's not like in today's society where we can ring someone up, someone up on the phone or talk to them on Zoom or Skype or hop in the car and drive to see them. They had to saddle up their camels and get their supplies ready for a long trip. It was not a simple thing to go and visit Job in a far off land. But they did what cost them something so that they could go and intentionally be there and be um, a comfort to Job. And a real comfort that we want to give somebody is probably going to cost us something. It's probably going to mean that we have to do something very intentional. It's not going to happen by accident. It's going to happen because we hear about things and our empathy meter is way up there. And we, our heart goes out to somebody. God puts compassion in our hearts and it prompts us to want to do something. And that's what it's there. And so if we're going to really be a comfort to someone and God works for us to come alongside somebody, it has to be intentional. It's going to cost us something. Then Job's friends felt his pain. It says that they tore their clothes and they sprinkled dust on their head and they wept aloud, which is all again in that culture. Signs of mourning. They mourned with Job the loss of so much in his life. I heard a phrase in a song once that really spoke to me and it talked about, the phrase was, taste the tears in someone else's eyes. And that's where real empathy and real comfort comes from. And we can not just see the tears, maybe not just even wipe them away, but taste the tears in someone else's eyes. To feel someone else's pain and to help carry that for them. I was watching another TV show where the person kind of obviously and wisely said, the only way to real, really feel someone's pain is to feel someone's pain. And we don't like feeling our own pain, let alone someone else's. And sometimes we, we recoil at the thought of, of walking into someone's life when they are in extreme pain. But God wants to work through us to give his comfort to someone else. And in order for us to do that, we need to walk into someone's pain. Paul talks about um, talking to his followers that he's writing to, the new Christians in, in one of his churches, and he says, I am in pains of childbirth until God has formed me. He wants them so much to become like Christ and to, to, to grow more as Christians that he literally feels it in his gut. He feels the pain. And I think God is calling us from time to time to feel that pain that will draw us to pray for someone, and that will draw us to step out intentionally and do something. And then what did Job's three friends do? Well, what we hear is that, we read it that they went to be with him. 
they sat on the ground with him. Yeah, on the Bible on my phone. So they sat on the ground with him. They practiced what I like to call the ministry of being there, the ministry of presence. And sometimes that's all someone needs is for someone else to, to be there, to come alongside them, to be the physical human presence of Jesus through the Holy Spirit through us. And where we can walk with them, walk alongside them through the pain and difficulty they're going through. We be with them. And then what's powerful in this story is that they were silent. It says they sat with him for seven days and seven nights, and no one said a thing. Can you imagine not talking for seven days and seven nights? Especially when there's so much to talk about. Oh, what happened to you? Why is this happening? No, they just they just sat there. And they didn't say a word. Remember years ago, oh, I was going to see a Christian movie in a church. And back then, Christian movies weren't all that great. They didn't always have the greatest um, reputation or greatest quality about them. But, and this one had its good moments and its bad moments. One of the actors was terrible. But there was this scene where it was about this husband and wife, and the husband died in an accident. And, and um, the husband used to leave, this was back when post-it notes first came out, and he would leave sticky notes all over the house for his wife. And of course, after he had died, and, and after the funeral and everything, she was forever still finding these post-it notes in all these obscure places all over the house. And, and she was just having a really, really hard time, of course. And, and so this neighbor, Christian lady, came over. And the film for about, oh, it's been a minute and a half, just had these clips, these 15, 20 second clips of the two of them sitting around the, the kitchen table drinking tea. And all it was was the widow lady talking. So she talked for 15 seconds, and, and then there's another clip. Maybe they're dressed differently, so it's a different day, and she's talking for 15, 20 seconds. And there's about five or six clips, one after the other, and it, it struck me as I'm watching this, the other lady's not saying anything. She's just sitting there, sipping her tea and listening. And it really struck me how powerful that ministry was in this movie and how powerful it hit me and how powerful that can be just being with someone in silence because sometimes someone's difficulties are so deep and so difficult that words are almost an insult words just won't cut it at that time i mean god describes his son jesus as the word god speaks to us through the word of god God speaks through words, and words are important, and words are valuable, but they need to be words in the proper season, words that are ready to be heard, words that are wise, and the right words at the right time. And I think Job, the story of Job's friends here tell us, tells us that there are times when silence is golden, when we just need to be there and listen. And in doing that, God works through us to provide comfort to someone else, through the comfort that God himself has given us. God who's always there to listen, always there to come alongside by his Holy Spirit and support us. In this time of isolation, in this time of uncertainty, there are probably a lot of people in your circle who could use some comfort. So our challenge this morning is may we be at the hands and feet of Jesus, showing the comfort in tangible, real ways that we've received from God and sharing it with others. May that comfort be intentional. May it be something that we don't just let happen, but we decide, yes, we're going to do it. And may it cost us something when we reach out and do it. May we come alongside someone and be willing to walk with them and be there with them, listening, saying the right word at the right time, just more than anything, just coming alongside someone and being there. May we know the, the joy, the deep joy in the inside. When God works through us, and uses us to be that kind of comfort to someone else. Can I pray with you? 
God, thank you, Lord, for your comfort. Thank you, Lord, for giving us what we don't deserve, for, for the comfort you give us even when we get ourselves in trouble, for the comfort you give us when things happen to us that, that are beyond our control. Thank you, Lord, for your promises, for your faithfulness, for who you are, for your unfailing love, for your word that comforts us, that lets us know that you are in control even when things seem crazy around us. And Lord, I pray that as we've experienced comfort from you, help us to look for ways intentionally to pass that comfort on to someone else. I pray, Lord, that you would use the difficult times we've experienced in our lives to just set our empathy meter through the roof. May we just have our radar out to people who are going through things who could use comfort, going through things that maybe are similar to what we went through. And help us, Lord, to come alongside them, and just be there for them, be there with them, to walk a mile in their shoes, to feel their pain, and to listen. Help us, Lord, not to always feel like we have to fix everything and, and, and say something just to fill the air. Give us the courage and the ability to just listen and be there. I pray that you'll work through us and give us the joy and privilege to know that you are working through us to be a comfort to someone else. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope and pray that you feel God's comfort this week and that you'll have a chance to be a comfort to someone else. Well, check out the other music and other messages on our YouTube channel. Ruth is putting up devotionals and music. We are replaying some old sermons we did a couple of years ago on the Apostles' Creed, which is a great Christianity 101 series. And so check it out, enjoy it, and have a great week. I'll begin soon.